Uh, all right, so let's get to the rotation. <laughs> I love it. Uh, because John Heyman last night, uh, Corey Seidman, Spencer Turnbull was Tuesday, right, this week? Yeah. I'm yes. really bad he at calendars Tuesday. and at all much. It was the uh, nice late three-hour Yes, game. so he pitched on Tuesday. I believe it was either late Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning. Corey Seidman put out a piece with NBC Sports Philly and basically said, eh, the decision hasn't really been made yet on Spencer Turnbull. All options are being weighed. Uh, whether that's piggybacking with Taiwan Walker starts, mm -hmm. whether it's handcuffing him to Christopher Sanchez or Taiwan Walker starts as like a middle relief guy, straight up remaining in the rotation, going to the bullpen, everything was on the table. And then last night, John Heyman, national reporter from the New York Post and uh, MLB Sirius and all that, uh, said the Phillies are considering keeping Spencer Turnbull in the rotation. We all know that Spencer Turnbull doesn't, probably have 180 to 200 innings in him. Right. Maybe he does, but I think he's earned the chance to keep going here. I think it's the fourth best ERA in major league baseball, kind of impossible to send that guy to the pen. So I get why the Phillies are weighing everything. I don't know what the answer is going to be here. I'm very fascinated to find out, but Spencer Turnbull kind of forced their, their hand here in making a really hard decision. So kudos to Spencer Turnbull for already earning that $2 million. Yeah, mm -hmm. you would, I mean, what a bargain. He's He's been incredible. And it's a fascinating question because there's so many different directions you can go. Um, you know, it's tough for us to speculate because you know that the Phillies as an organization probably do have an innings max in mind. Sure. Yeah. Spencer Turnbull, they're not going to share it with us. Um, but they know, you know, they they've crunched numbers and done the analytics sure. and they have something in mind for Spencer Turnbull. And then if you have that number, you can work backwards and then figure, do you, do you ride the hot hand right now, get everything you can sure. out of him and then say, thank you for your service. Uh, when you do, see something, maybe Taiwan just swaps. Yeah. Again yeah. Or maybe or swaps in. I would, I would say reading between the lines and just at what Thompson's responses seem to have been most excited about is maybe this piggy, piggybacking idea. Yeah. The idea that you would pair Turnbull with either Sanchez or Walker, and, you know, they'd both be expected to go about four or five innings. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, you're going to get pulled after four or five, no matter how well you're doing. Sure. Just keep both of them and sharp. That's, that's mentally yeah. something. Mentally, it's something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But and, I... Regardless, mentally, there's going to have to be something. There's no yeah. clean way of cutting this because when you have in Spencer Turnbull's one six seven ERA that he started out the season with, um, in his six starts, he's been phenomenal. And Spencer Turnbull has made it really difficult. Yeah. It, it seems like a, a very easy situation of this is temporary. When Taiwan Walker comes back, Spencer Turnbull will slide out of the rotation. Taiwan will get back into the five spot. But now I love the fact that Spencer Turnbull even has us having this conversation because unlike a situation like Chris Sale or, you know, other guys that are coming back, even Jordan Hicks, who we'll get into, you know, there, this is a great situation that you have a guy that hasn't pitched more than 56 and two thirds innings since 2019. That's at his best right now that we've seen in a very long time, but you don't need him. You know, this is you're you're talking about who's going to be fourth. Fit, you know, take that fifth spot in the rotation. This is not your top pitcher. This is not even your second best. You have a, a pitcher that is literally top across the league in ERA right now that you're considering sending to the bullpen. That's and incredible. I think I honestly always feel like ride the hot hand. Like I wish the Sixers had did that yesterday. When you have someone How does scoring, Buddy not playing the third. When quarter, you have somebody scoring, when you have somebody getting strikeouts, when you have somebody that's playing so well, you got to stick with that. Don't. It shouldn't be on you as the manager to yeah. ice them out. Don't you be the reason that Spencer Turnbull's tremendous start drops off. Keep him going. And then if it does get to a point where you start to see his numbers wavering a bit and he's not pitching as well, okay, that to me is a simple move. You've mm -hmm. got options there. But I think piggybacking, and I know we talked about this on Wednesday, piggybacking makes the most sense. Six-man rotation with the May schedule. There's a lot of days they have like five games and then it'll be like a break. It would just mess up the entire rotation, in my opinion. But a piggybacking yeah. situation of putting the pressure on Taiwan and Spencer. Listen, guys, you're going to be splitting each game. You're going to have four or five innings each, depending on how the game's flowing. Puts the pressure on them of like, Owning up to who's going to win out this spot. Yeah. yeah. The one thing you can't do, uh, which we didn't mention yesterday, but there was a quote 
uh, and I saw it, maybe it was Jason in the chat talking about this. You can't go to a true six man rotation because Zach Wheeler was not happy. Yeah. Uh, he said it very politely yeah. and very professionally, but, he, was but clear. He, he basically blamed like his struggles and his mm -hmm. laboring out in Anaheim on the fact that he got an extra day's rest. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. you can't do that. That one's out. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, conversation in the chat here um, about why not just go six man. It makes a lot of sense on the surface, but like you said, Jamie, it, your ace, Zach Wheeler, he doesn't like it. He so gets you know what he wants. You cannot, you <laughs> cannot off the at table. the expense of Zach go with a six man rotation. Yeah. If you have to choose, I think we'd rather have a better Zach Wheeler. And I'm sure Aaron and Ranger, I wouldn't be surprised if they're on the same in the same mindset because they are more tenured starting pitchers. You know, right. they know what works best for their routine. They're not fighting for a spot. They're locked into one, two, three. You know, so yeah. for them, it's like, wait a minute, don't go messing up what I've got going on here just because right. we're trying to accommodate having Taiwan and Spencer. You figure that out uh, with having them piggyback. So honestly, after the, the way that Zach struggled on the road trip with that, you know, the, the change in the rotation, that in itself was the sample size I feel like we needed to show. Nope, six-man rotation's yeah. not the option. It's not going to help the entire pitching staff. Yeah, and actually, I was curious, so I went back and looked at a, a larger sample size, and it seems like Zach Wheeler actually does when given that extra day of rest for whatever reason. Struggle. He has stellar mm. no matter. Stellar is still good. Yeah. Struggled for Zach Wheeler. Yes. Still yeah. good. Um, doesn't seem to pitch as well, so that's a huge consideration. And then even if Nola, Suarez, even if Wheeler were – 100% okay with it. If you go full six man, you get a lot fewer Wheeler starts, a lot fewer Suarez yeah. starts, a lot fewer Nola starts. Right now, Turnbull's been amazing over the course of the season. I still think those those three pitchers are probably going to be your your guys. I, I don't think Spencer Turnbull is going to end up as your ace. Um, right? Do you want do you do you want your your big three losing? Um, the not, losing starts out there. 